All right, it's time to expand our application across multiple pages. I think that it makes sense for the first thing that a user sees when they arrive on our notice board website is a list of notices. And they can go to a separate page in our app if they wanna create a notice. So what I actually wanna do, is I wanna break this group out into its own page. So the first thing is I'm actually gonna create a new page. So to do that, I go up into this top left and I'll go add new page. And we'll call this page create notice. So there can't be any spaces. We can also clone an existing page, um, but we don't need to do that right now. Okay, so here's our new page, right? It is um, set to be fixed width, which is what we want so that we don't have to deal with any of those responsive settings. So now we'll just come back to our index page. We'll grab this guy. And what I could do is I could just copy, okay, and go to create notice, right click, paste, okay? Only problem is we have to recreate the workflow that was previously attached to this post button. But there is actually a way to bring that workflow along with us when we paste. So what I'll do is I'll actually undo this. I'll go back to the index page, right click on this, and instead of clicking copy, I want copy with workflows. And now when I go to create a notice, I will right click paste with workflows. And that actually preserves that workflow attached to any of the elements inside of the group. So we don't have to actually recreate that event now from scratch. So that's cool. We've got our create a notice page now. Obviously it's pretty blank, but that's okay. We're only learning the ropes here. Um, we want a way though, of course, to navigate between our create post page and our index page. And we're not gonna break with tradition here. We're going to use a header. So what I can do is I can just grab a big group here and pull it across the top of the page. Okay, and maybe I will give it a color as well just to make it stand out from the rest. Give it sort of a dark gray, right? And then maybe I just want a sort of a button over here. Okay, that's kind of an ugly button, but you know, again, we're not, we're not really optimizing for nice looking design here today. Okay, we might call that button home, right? And we obviously wanna have a workflow that when this button is clicked, it takes us to our home page. So we can start edit workflow and the action that we are looking for is under navigation, go to page, right? And now we can actually just choose from any of the pages that we have in our application. And of course, the index page is what we want. Now we don't really need to worry about the data to send. That would be relevant if your page actually had a type of content, okay? Just like a group can have a type of content, right? This group over here can have a type of content. A page can also have a type of content and that, that actually lets you send data, for example, send a particular notice from one page to another page. And once it's sort of on that page, living in that page, then you can have access to it from any element or any workflow on that page. When we are thinking about a page, it's just a special type of container. That's all it is, really. All right, so we've got our header now on the page. If I click that, it'll take me to the index page, but we're missing, of course, that same header on the home page. So of course, what we could do is just copy this, right? Bring it over to the index page. I'll delete this group since we don't need it. Drag this guy up, drag this guy up, right? And then just paste that group back on the page. You can see the actual, actually the width of this page is a little bit smaller than our, um, our create post page. So what I might do, I'll just jump in here and I will reduce the height manually here quite dramatically, maybe to 2000. Actually, we'll go a little, we'll go to about 800. All right, there's the bottom there. It really doesn't need to be that long. Okay, and then I also just wanna bring it in. Now there's one thing preventing me from bringing it in right now and that's this alert up the top. So I'm gonna drag that in as well. 
and then I can pull their width of the page in to match the, the width of the create post page. But coming back to our header for a moment, it doesn't really make sense for every time that we want to create a new page to have to recreate this header, right? This header lives independently from the one that we have on the create notice page. But if we change this one, right, if we add another button here, you know, which is going to go to the users, let's say account page for the sake of argument. Well, that's not being replicated now on our index page header. Okay, so we really want, you know, to create the header in one place. And anytime that we make changes, for those changes to be reflected throughout the entire application anywhere where we want to have that header sitting. And this is where the concept of reusable elements comes in. Another, you know, perfectly descriptive name, okay? You build it in one place and then you can reuse it throughout multiple places in your application. And you actually have the ability to turn any element you want into a reusable element. So we'll do that here. On this header, what we'll do is we'll right click and go to convert into a reusable element. And now we're gonna give it a name. So let's call it our new header, All right? And that actually opens you up on an entirely new page, which is really just a design area for your reusable element. If I go up to this top left, you can see like underneath the pages, I actually have a section for reusable elements. And you can see that Bubble actually has already some default stock standard reusable elements for us. So we actually don't need to create our own like we're doing here. We could actually just steal the header that Bubble has already kind of given us as like the template header. And the nice thing about this header is that it is already connected to another reusable, which is the pop-up. We haven't talked about pop-ups yet, but pop-up is just a group that you know, like, you know, lives sort of in front of the page, so to speak. We'll, we'll cover them shortly. Um, and this reusable sign up login pop-up is really important for us to be able to create and log in users, which we'll cover in the next video. For now though, let's go back to our index page and we'll delete this header. And then we can actually come down to the bottom of our elements section here, grab the header and just drag it onto the page. Okay, and you can see that it's actually a lot wider than the page is. So maybe just for simplicity, we'll, we'll, we'll open it up a little bit and we'll put the same header on the create notice page. So I'll drag this header across. And you know, you notice if I drag this width even just a little bit, it sort of snaps to the edge of that header. And now we can just edit this header in the one place. So I could go to it via this dropdown or I could just click on it and click edit element, right? And obviously we're not building a bubble app, that's not really relevant for us. So we'll come over to these links over here, that's another element type that we haven't really covered in depth here. So instead of a button, Bubble was just given us a link element. And that link has a destination, it'll open up some URL for us. And it's got it set to an external URL here. We can actually set it to be an internal page. And we can say this is gonna be our home link, right? Which is gonna take us to the index page. And then this frequently asked questions one, we'll make that a create notice link. I might have to make this a little bit larger and set this to be internal page pointing to the create notice page. And now if I reload my app one more time, I've got this head up the top. In fact, it's actually taking up quite a bit of room there on our index page because it's quite a bit, the height is quite a bit larger than the header that we created. I can't go to the home page if I'm already on it, but I'll go to the create notice page. You notice I actually opened it up there in an entirely new tab. That's actually not the behavior that we want. So I'm gonna go back to our header element and I go on these link, we see, you can see we've got open in a new tab selected. We actually don't want that behavior for either of these links, All right? So now if I go to the create notice page, it simply opens that page up for us. So we've got a nice little navigation system here and we've also got this button already linked 
to a trigger to launch the sign up pop-up, which we'll cover in the next video. All right, our header is working nicely. Now it's time to talk about this sign up or login pop-up that Bubble has created already for us. And that'll obviously lead us into a discussion about how Bubble handles users.